Good afternoon and welcome back to the second in our instalment of Organic Analysis Techniques. We're going to have a look at infrared spectroscopy today. A bit more involved than mass spectroscopy, this one. Um, let me find the outcomes on it. Uh, basically what you do is you take yourself a molecule and you fire a low, below what we can see, infrared energy at this molecule. Uh, and unlike mass spectroscopy, we're not breaking it apart this time. What you are doing is making the bonds vibrate. They go twang like elastic bands. They can actually do a couple of things. They can, um, they can stretch and they can actually bend, believe it or not, depending on the wavelength of the infrared light. But the key thing here is, of course, that a CC bond does not vibrate or stretch or bend at the same uh, wavelength as a CH bond, which enables you to try and map different bonds to different wavelengths of infrared light that go missing because this is absorption spectroscopy basically folks um, let me show you a typical infrared spectrum here and let me just check the outcomes so um, this is what it looks like so because I said it's absorption spectroscopy basically a flat line if you passed it through nothing it would just look like that certain wavelengths go missing because they're absorbed by these bonds as they vibrate and that's why you get drops in the spectrum if you have a look at here, you'll find uh, transmittance up the side, uh, and this, what sort of unit is that? A uh, wave number as well, because I called it wavelength earlier on. Wavelength and wave number are the reciprocal of each other. So a wave number is basically one over a wavelength, a lambda, with this weird unit here. Uh, and I'll show you how to calculate that a frequent loved question is to turn a wave number into a wavelength, and there's a trip wire waiting for you here, but we'll come back to that in the very near future. In the meantime, let's have a look at a typical spectrum here. This spectrum here is peachy because it's got two of the favourite things they love asking about uh, on it. It's got this big massive cl crystal clear spike at around 1700 centimetres to the minus one, today's ridiculous unit. Uh, and it's also got this big broad blob here, around 3000. Um, very different shapes and very different bonds that you're searching for. This corresponds to the carbonyl uh, vibration and this big blob here across here, when it's wide and spread like that, that corresponds to OH. On a technical basis, it's actually because the OHs interact with each other and you get hydrogen bonding and that's why it absorbs across a huge variety of wave numbers. Um, we're looking for the table on, let me just find it for you, page something of the data book. Here we go, we're on page 14 of the data book. And here are your wave numbers. Here are the individual bonds that are stretching. Um, sometimes they clarify them, a CH stretch in a double bond or a CH in a triple bond. Um, sometimes the carbonyl can have slightly different wave numbers depending on what type of molecule it's in. But as I said, those two are the favourites for them asking about. The last thing I'll do is have a look at calculation of wave numbers and wavelengths on the other side of this. So if we had, for example, if you had a wave number of 1700 centimetres to the minus one, and we wanted to um, do some maths with that, if we want to turn it into a, if we want to turn it into a wavelength, then for example, what I would say is I would get you to realise that is one over 1700 um, centimetres. Uh, that is not an IS, uh, SI, sorry, it's not an SI unit, so let's fix that right now. Let's turn that into meters. So, um, excuse me, just two seconds. Sorry, my apologies. Uh, let's do the calculation for first. So the wave number, get it right here. I've been doing videos. Don't worry, I do apologize. So let's start again. Wave number equals one over lambda. Okay, uh, and we've got 1700 centimeters is one over lambda so therefore if we do one over 1700 that will give us the wavelength in centimeters so let's do that first where's my calculator excuse me so that will be 2.946 times 10 to the minus 4 so our wavelength is that but that's in centimeters that's your classic mistake at this point here, we want to change it into meters last. So do the reciprocal of it first, and then the second stage is change that into meters because that's what they're asking for the wavelength in. Um, 
which will be uh, divided by 100, of course. So we'll put another 2 on that. That will become 2.946 times 10 to the minus 6 metres. Um, it's just one mark, that, but it's easy to make a mistake. As you saw, I nearly made a mistake first. So a quick recap there. Do the reciprocal, flip it first. That gives you the wave length in centimetres, and lastly, change it into metres. Is there anything I haven't covered um, on infrared? Excuse me. Nope, that's it folks. So, very quick recap. Infrared spectroscopy is all about making bonds go boing, make them vibrate or bend and stretch um, at specific uh, wavelengths. Annoyingly, it's not actually shown in wavelength, it's shown in wave number. Um, if you're interested, why? Why is that? It's because as you go... Do you know what? We're not even going to go there. We're not even... It's spectroscopy. It's full of historians. So um, it's shown a wave number, which is 1 over the wave length. Uh, the two common ones they ask you about are 1700, and this what the broad stretch here for OH and carbonyl groups. But there are other groups, and they might ask you about them, so they're on page 14 of the data book. And lastly, conversion from wave number to wave length is do the reciprocal of the wave number first, which gives you wavelength in centimetres, and then turn it into metres. And we're done. Thank you for listening.